Hey guys, it's Joanna, and today's video is going to be a review of six different mineral-only sunscreens. So keep watching! Now first, before I get started, if you're new here, hello and welcome! I hope you enjoy this video, and you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Logic vs. Luxury. Okay, so on to mineral sunscreens. Now, mineral sunscreens, also known as physical sunscreens, basically refers to the fact that its primary filters are either zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide. And so, you know, in the US, you'll see on a sunscreen a bottle that says active ingredients. And so those are the active ingredients that are gonna be listed. Now, in this video, I'll be applying all of the sunscreens at the two milligrams per centimeter squared dosage which is the amount that's needed to achieve the SPF that's on the label. And for me, that's roughly about three-fourths of, of a quarter teaspoon, so about three-sixteenths of a teaspoon. And if you want to know how I came up with that number for me, you can go check out my last video wherein I explain all of that to you. So I'll link that video down below. Since I don't actually have a three-sixteenth of a teaspoon measuring uh, utensil, I, in this video, will just be kind of eyeballing that amount in a quarter teaspoon. Obviously, this isn't a scientific lab, this is a YouTube video, so it's not going to be 100% precise, but basically you get the gist. And also, I will say that for all of the products that I'm going to be using, I applied this on top of my kind of standard morning skincare, uh, and I used the Bosha Cactus Water Moisturizer as the moisturizer underneath, so it's kind of all the same moisturizer in all of these uses. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's get into the reviews. First up is the Australian Gold Botanical Sunscreen in SPF 50. Now this is mineral only, so again, titanium dioxide 4%, zinc oxide 4%. Now I had the tinted version of this sunscreen last year, but because I had so many other products, I ended up giving that to my mom. So today, this is going to be the untinted version. When I had the tinted version last year, I had a positive impression of it at the time, but Actually, I never used the full dosage because I always had a regular moisturizer that I used underneath that already had SPF and so when I applied sunscreen on top, I didn't use the full 3 16th of a teaspoon. Today, I'm going to be reviewing this using the full 3 16th of a teaspoon, so it's going to be a bit different. Now, the price for this with 5 fluid ounces, which is a lot of product, is only about $7 on Amazon, at Target, etc. So it's a very, very affordable sunscreen. In terms of its ingredients, it does have you know a pretty good ingredients list. Nothing on there is particularly dangerous, and you know there are some nice, uh, nice moisturizing factors like shea butter and squalene. So you know it's overall I think a pretty good ingredients list. I will say though that it does have fragrance, and it's a very strong fragrance. It smells like bananas and coconuts, and so if you're not into that. This is definitely going to be a hard pass. It is very, very tropical smelling. The fragrance does dissipate with time, but you know, especially when you first apply it, it's going to be very strong. I personally don't love the scent, and I feel like in the tinted version there's a different scent. I mean, I may be misremembering that, but I don't recall having such a negative reaction to the scent when using the tinted version in the past. Texture-wise, I can best describe this as a cream, but it's kind of a dry to the touch cream. So it's you know kind of thick, but again, it just feels a little dry to the touch of that, if you know what I'm talking about. The only thing to know about the application is that you're really just kind of assaulted with the scent, as I've mentioned, and also that it kind of leaves your hands feeling dry afterwards. The other thing is, as you can see, when I'm applying the full 3 16th of a teaspoon, I look like a freaking ghost. This is absolutely not going to work if you are anything but white, <laughs> like pure white, and I don't mean like, you know, ethnicity white, I mean like your skin is like a sheet of paper. Even after five minutes, this is still going to leave a really visible white cast. I mean, honestly, if you're going to use this, you absolutely need to use some kind of tinted product on top. On the plus side, when you put a tinted moisturizer on top of this, it actually, I kind of liked the, the effect and the end result, but this on its own was absolutely not doable. Also on its own, it is incredibly, incredibly drying. And it does have a matte finish, so it's good if you're, you know, an oily skinned person, but, you know, otherwise it just really feels drying on the skin. And I have combo skin with an oily T-zone, and I really had a hard time tolerating this. For sure, for sure, I had to use some kind of a moisturizing product, like a tinted moisturizer, on top of this. Overall, this is a cheap product, but to be honest, it's not really the most pleasant, and without using other products as well, you can't really just use this alone, in my opinion. 
If you are looking for something really affordable, you can try the tinted version of this. Like I said, I don't recall having quite a negative reaction to that as I do to this, but it's been a while and I've tried a lot of products since, so I can't be 100% sure. Overall, I really don't recommend this. One out of five stars from me. Next up is the Cots Tinted Sunscreen for the face with SPF 40. This product I picked up because of all the rave reviews I've seen on different websites for this particular product and I've never actually tried it or really tried any of their products before so I was curious about it and I ended up picking it up for this review. At 24 bucks for about 42.5 grams, this is measured in grams because this is actually a very thick product and so instead of using like a fluid ounce measurement, they use the grams measurement. So for me, 42.5 grams at the, you know, kind of dosage I need for that coverage, as I mentioned before, that gives me about 50-ish, 50 plus kind of uses if I'm using the full dosage each time. So at 24 bucks, it's not really the cheapest product. The ingredients on this are basically your standard mineral filters. This one has titanium dioxide 8% and zinc oxide 3.8%. Uh, and then on top of that, it basically is just those filters in a you know solution of all silicones. It is really, really very much like a primer and like a very thick primer like the Benefit Pore Professional, if you're familiar with that product. Now, in terms of application, this product is quite thick and because it's also kind of quite dark when you first apply it to your skin, as you can see, you do have to kind of be a little bit uh, careful to make sure it doesn't end up looking kind of streaky. That being said, once it is worked into your skin, it leaves a really nice silky matte finish and it just, it feels quite good. On my skin, it looks maybe just a slight, slight bit of orange. Uh, and even after five minutes, I feel like it is just, again, still slightly, slightly orange. And so if you are fairer skinned than I am, you might, you know, if you're gonna apply the full dose of this, it might be a bit too dark for your skin. Now, as I mentioned, this does have a really nice matte, silky matte finish. And again, it is very much like the pore professional or any kind of really thick silicone primer, because that's basically what this is with some added benefit of sunscreen. So the plus of that is that makeup goes on top of this really nicely. And in fact, it's what I'm wearing today. I have this with like, you know, kind of a full face of makeup right now. It also feels really moisturizing. So even though it's matte, it, it, you know, it just feels like a nice little silicone sheet that you've put on your skin and it's just like keeping all of that moisture in. So matte but very moisturizing. I think this would work well for all skin types regardless if you're dry or oily skinned uh, as long as you're looking for that kind of matte finish. Overall, this is a really nice little product but it is a little bit high maintenance and what I mean by that is again, you know, when you're working it in to make sure it's not streaky, you do have to watch out for that. And the other thing is when you have it on your skin, you do definitely feel that you have product on your skin. You know, like I said, it's kind of like wearing a full face of makeup. So if you're one of those people who doesn't really like that feeling, like that you can't really touch your face throughout the day, which even though you shouldn't be doing anyway, some of us, you know, I, can, I do tend to do that kind of without even noticing it. So this product is a bit high maintenance in that you can't just be very casual about your face. But if you are the type to do a full face anyway and you use a silicone primer already, you know, might as well just get rid of that primer and start using this instead because I think for the price and for what the results that you're getting, this is actually a really nice product. Not so much for my lifestyle, but for some of you, this would be great. Three out of five stars for me. Next is the Elta MD UV Physical SPF 41. This has been a long time, a favorite product of mine. Part of the reason I did this video was because I was curious to see what else is out there in terms of physical sunscreens and if this is still one of my favorites. So this product is marketed for super sensitive skin. In fact, it's marketed for post-operation skin. So if you are going to get a nose job, you know, consider this one. <laughs> now this is tinted and for 30 bucks, it is 85 grams. So again, this is measured in grams because this is actually quite a thick product rather than in fluid ounces. So as a reminder, the COTS was, you know, 42 grams. So this is basically double the amount of product that the COTS has. And it's a, a little bit less in terms of uh, price point for the quantity that you get at $30. The ingredients on this are great. You've got your standard mineral filters. On this one, it is zinc oxide 9% and titanium di dioxide 7%. But then on top of that, it has a lot of great moisturizing ingredients and a bunch of antioxidants to, again, give your skin more protection. Texturally, this feels like a really nice, thick, creamy moisturizer. In terms of application, it does have a slight tint that does a nice job in leaving no cast for my skin. 
And because the tint isn't as dark as the cots, for example, you also don't have to kind of really worry about having too much streakiness. I feel like this, uh, you know, even at the full dose of application, it does absorb and blend into your skin relatively easily. I think if you're a darker skin tone than me, you'll probably need to work this in a bit more just to make sure that there's no kind of residue showing. But after five minutes, I feel like it just looks like your skin, like maybe your skin with a nice layer of moisturizer on top. The finish on this is really nice and dewy. It feels very natural, and unlike the cots that feels like you, know, you have something on your skin, this one is absorbed a bit more into the skin, I feel like, and it just feels like a really nice, thick moisturizer. The tint on this is just ever so slight, so it's, you know, I think a perfect little amount of coverage if all you're doing in the day is just running around town, running some errands. The only downside with this product that I have noticed in the course of using it is that sometimes it will pill depending on what other products you're using. And in fact, with the Bosha Cactus Water, this did pill a little bit. The pilling is not so bad, so you know, you can kind of dust it off and then as long as you're not continuing to fid fidget with your skin, this will gener generally be fine. But that is something to be aware of, particularly if you are the type to, again, use a lot of uh, different products and, and layer a lot of different products. This might might have a negative reaction with something and pill. Overall though, if you're looking for kind of a one step that can substitute or replace a moisturizer, this would be a really good product. I always like to keep this on hand, especially for those days when I just have really dry, sensitive skin, because I know that this is going to be a reliable, reliable source of sun coverage without irritation. So I give this a 4.5 out of 5. All right, next up is the Drunk Elephant Umbra Sheer Physical Daily Defense Protection Quotidian SPF 30. That is a long ass name, Drunk Elephant. <laughs> there is also a tinted version of this, uh, but I have the untinted here for this review. And since it is marketed as sheer, I just wanted to see exactly how true that is. This is $34 for three fluid ounces or 90 milliliters of product. So it's roughly the same size as the Elta MD, even though the Elta is measured in grams and this is measured in uh, fluid ounces and milliliters. So again with this if you are using the full dose You should be getting about a hundred applications of sunscreen. The ingredients on this like all drunk elephant products are really nice There are a lot of nice moisturizing ingredients antioxidants um, on top of your kind of standard physical filters Which again for this is actually just a zinc oxide at 20% the other nice thing about this it is fragrance free Texturally speaking, this is like a lighter weight moisturizer compared to the Elta MD, which is more thick and creamy. This is really light and creamy, if you know what I mean. I mean, a small amount of this will instantly go sheer, and so it is, in that regard, true if you are using a small amount. As you can see, as I'm applying the full dosage, this then becomes a little problematic because it definitely leaves a white cast, you guys. It does not look sheer and really requires you working it into the skin to not have a streaky white finish. Even after five minutes, there's still a slight white cast. Now, unlike the Australian Gold, where you really can't leave the house, this one is not as noticeable, but it is there. Again, there is a tinted version of this, which I have not tried, but from the reviews I've read, it, I think it is a bit darker, and so if you're a darker skin tone, I think that would work well for you, but if you're a lighter skin tone, or you know, you know, like me, or lighter, the dark, um, the tinted version might be a little dark just based on the reviews I've read. So that's really a bit too bad for this product that there is that slight white cast because otherwise this is a really nice moisturizer and again, similar to the Alta MD, using this your skin feels really moisturized and you can probably just you know, skip the moisturizing step and just go with this. So overall this is a nice product but I'm just a bit disappointed at the fact that it's not really as sheer as I would like when you're applying the full dose. If you're applying less than that, such as maybe layering it with other products, and I don't think this is a problem, but for that reason, I can't give this the full mark, so I actually only give this a three out of five. Next up, I've got a couple of Asian mineral-only sunscreens, and first is the APU Pure Block Mild Plus Sun Cream, and this is SPF 32. This comes in at about $10, depending on where you buy it, and that is for 50 milliliters of product. So this is about you know, $10 less expensive than the Drunk Elephant or Alta MD um, if you were to do the same quantity. So with this, you could probably get around you know, 50-ish uses at the full dosage. The ingredients on this are, again, your standard physical filters, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. Unfortunately, I don't see on here, and I can't read Korean anyway, but I don't see any percentages listed for how much, so I'm not sure if they just have different kind of ingredients 
listing standards, but it's SPF 32. Other ingredients in here include a bunch of antioxidants and extracts, and I think a lot of those also go into the fact that this is a fragrance product. It is a nice fragrance, not like a you know tropical coconut bonanza such as the Australian gold, but it is definitely a fragrance, so if you're sensitive to that, this is gonna be a pass for you. I like the fragrance, it's kind of floral, and it does dissipate pretty quickly. Texturally speaking, this is honestly very, very similar to the Drunk Elephant, almost identical. It's a lightweight, creamy moisturizer, and the performance is also very similar to Drunk Elephant. At the full dose, it definitely goes on with a white cast, and I'd say that maybe it's a little bit easier to work into the skin compared to the Drunk Elephant, but again, they're very similar. After about five minutes, this is also, I think, slightly less white cast than the Drunk Elephant, but there is still a faint white cast. One other thing I noticed about this product versus the Drunk Elephant is that the Drunk Elephant washes off really easily, and so that's also something you want to keep in mind if you're going to be kind of outdoors, sweating a lot, the Drunk Elephant might come off. This one, like the other products that I've used, it stays on your skin a little bit better, which is also a negative because you do have to work a little bit more on your skin to wash it off. Unfortunately, there isn't a tinted version of this that I can find, so you do again have that ever so slight white cast for my skin tone. If you're fairer than me, you probably wouldn't even notice. If you're darker than me, maybe you'd notice a little bit more. If this one did come in a, pro in a version that had a light tint without a fragrance, this would be hands down such a winner. I mean, it honestly is such a joy to use and it feels really moisturizing on the skin. Again, very similar to the Drunk Elephant. Overall, because of the ever so slight white cast and the fact that it has fragrance, I can't give this full mark, so I give this a four out of five. All right, last one on the list, and that is the Etude House Sunprise Mild Airy Finish Sun Milk in SPF 50. This is very similarly priced to the APU at about 10 to $12 for 55 milliliters of product, so you know, over 50 uses if you're using the full dose, roughly. This one is also untinted. And unlike all of the other sunscreens I've tried, this one is very, very watery. In fact, you have to give it a shake before using it. And it kind of got all over my hands when I was trying to measure this out, so forgive that. <laughs> Anyhow, the ingredients list on this, again, features your standard physical filters, both of them. And similar to the APU, I can't tell you how much exactly in percentage, but it's there and it gives you SPF 50. <laughs> now, it also has a some antioxidants, and a long list of extracts, which probably contribute to the fact that this is fragranced as well. This is a more citrus fragrance, and you can see in the extracts there are like citrus oils, etc., which I know is not necessarily the best thing you want to use in a product that is going to be exposed to the sun, but I imagine that there is a very low quantity in here, so unless you have sensitivity to those ingredients, at least I wouldn't worry too much about it from a protection standpoint. Texturally, this is a really, really liquid, and so when you work it into the, into the skin, it's absorbed quickly and easily and finishes with, with, a, with a actually quite matte finish. The application of this, because it's so liquid, is really fast and easy, which I do appreciate. And although there is a slight white cast when you first apply it, unlike every other untinted product I've reviewed today, this one actually at five minutes feels like, looks like there is no white cast. So I was really impressed. But, and there is always a but, isn't there? If you have dry skin, you're gonna not like this. This is a very, very drying, mattifying product. And like I said, it finishes matte, and you can definitely tell. It kept my skin matte the whole day. So if you have oily skin and you don't mind fragrance, you will definitely wanna give this a try because it really, I felt like, really control the oil. For me, with my combo skin, some days I could use this, but then other days when I do have those dry patches, this is not gonna work for me. So it's not a product that I can really reliably recommend. For those applying makeup on top, like the Australian Gold, the best products that will work with this are the ones that are gonna be a little bit more liquid because a dry product will just feel like a dry surface and it's just gonna kind of have some friction that you're not gonna want. Overall though, without hesitation, I would recommend this to those of you with oily skin and looking for oil control and sunscreen. I think this is again a great product, but it's just not going to be something I can use for my skin every single day. So for that, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. One other product I'll mention quickly is the Color Science Sun Forgettable, which I talked about also in my last video. 
and this is a powder product and for reasons you can go find out in my last video there's no way i would use just this product but for a reapplication with any of these products this is going to be a great kind of topper reapplication throughout the day as long as you aren't kind of like fully fully sweating off your existing sunscreen so just something in mind this is only again physical filters Overall, you know, of everything I tried, the LTMD remains my champion for physical only sunscreens, at least for everything that I've tried to date. But you know, who knows in the future if there's other stuff that you think is better than this, let me know down in the comments below. All right, so that's the end of this video. I tried to keep it fast. I tried to make it snappy. So if you guys enjoyed this, please, please let me know. Give this a thumbs up. I spent a lot of time on this and all these products I've purchased myself. And if you want to see this as well for uh, chemical sunscreens, also let me know down in the comments and I might do that in a future video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!